Welcome, my name is Duncan Fitter, your host for today. Welcome to the Oracle Analytics Platform Roadmap session. I would like to welcome both Gabby and Jacques who will be taking us through the um, session today. Hi, thank you, Duncan. Uh, so uh, excited to be here. Thank you all for joining us. Um, you know, this uh, roadmap session uh, was first, first delivered um, yesterday uh, in, for North America time zone. And uh, we, uh, you know, we are happy to be here to make sure that uh, everybody around the world will be able to, uh, to view it as well. Uh, we are here live, both myself and uh, members of my team, uh, including Duncan that you already heard, uh, to answer any live questions that you might have uh, on, the, on the Zoom conference. There is a Q&A uh, button on the, uh, below that you can just post your question. So uh, without further ado, uh, back to you, Duncan, and let's go ahead and start. Thank you all for joining us today in the Oracle Analytics Summit. My name is Gabby Rubin, and I lead the Oracle Analytics Cloud and Server Product Management Team. In our session today, I will be joined by Jacques Vigeant, Senior Director of Product Management. Hello, Jacques. Hi, Gabby. Are you sure this is six feet away? Now it is. This seems a bit right. Let's go ahead and start. In our keynote today, we will talk about our vision, strategy, and roadmap for Oracle Analytics Cloud and Server. Oracle Analytics is part of a vast and growing family of Oracle Cloud services and applications offered on Generation 2 Oracle Cloud infrastructure. On the Oracle Cloud, organization can find anything they need in order to run their business on the most elastic, performant, and secure cloud platform available today. From compute, storage, and other infrastructure needs to enterprise application, data management systems, and data catalog, all the way to development tools, data science platforms, and of course, analytics. These services are accompanied by a wide selection of third-party tools and applications available for quick deployment from the Oracle Cloud Marketplace. All these services come together to allow our customers to customize, create, and deploy end-to-end -end solutions that fit their needs and the needs of their internal consumers. Going from the data sources, persistent or stream, to data repositories and catalog to be used for custom development or analysis. To ensure these capabilities are available for everyone and everywhere, we are aggressively and constantly building new data centers. Oracle is planning to have 36 Generation 2 regions by the end of 2020. Oracle and AT Cloud is a key part of this vast expansion and is already available in 16 Generation 2 regions across four continents. Cloud expansion is only one side of our investment. Over the last year, we introduced more than 100 new features into Oracle Analytics Cloud. Anything from connectivity, new visualization, advanced analytics, increased performance and scale, and enhanced security. These new and improved capabilities are being delivered side by side with continuous improvement to our robustness, resiliency, performance, and quality. Oracle and the Oracle Analytics Cloud team is focused on partnering with the community to achieve higher level of customer satisfaction and service excellence. One notable addition to the family was the introduction of Oracle Analytics Server for Linux that brought most of the Oracle Analytics Cloud capabilities to our on-premises customers. But we have not come here to talk about what was already delivered. What we really want to talk about is some of the next 100 plus features that will be coming to the product. Starting with Oracle Analytics Server for Windows, which is coming soon, the use of SQL Server as a repository database for Oracle Analytics Server, and many more functional and management features across the entire stack. Let's dive into some of these highlights. To do so, we will need to start by outlining our core strategy. Hey, Gabby, can I take a screenshot of that? The good news, Jack, 
is that you don't need to. Our roadmap is available on the Oracle website, so you can get frequent updates on what's coming. Looking at the analytic market, we can identify three main categories. Governed analytics, where it is the role of IT to deliver analytic content, usually in the form of dashboards and reports on top of semantic models and central repositories like a data warehouse or a data lake. In the last several years, we have seen the growth of self-service analytics, where business analysts within the line of business wanted to have the agility and freedom to connect and explore the data themselves. Skilled analysts were able to create their own datasets, identify insights, create visualization, which were shared across their organization. And lastly, we are still experiencing the growth of augmented analytics, which is really an umbrella term to using advanced techniques to get to insights. It can be by utilizing AI and machine learning, interacting using natural language and chatbots, or a host of other advanced and not always traditional methods. While you can find various tools in each one of these categories, our visions for inception was to bring it all together. The reason is that separation is artificial. While we have multiple types of analytics consumer in the organization, by the end of the day, they all need to collaborate. It is okay for everyone to consume and interact with information in the way that it is the most productive for their needs. But if there is no single analytic catalog and platform, how can a self-service user promote his content for use within the enterprise? Collaborate with a mobile user over an insight. Integrate his metric into the organization digital assistance or chatbot. Our vision is that diversity does not mean separation. You should be able to choose the best way for you to interact with information, but still get all the benefits of the platform. In fact, Looking at some of the main personas across the organization and their use of analytics, we quickly identify that while some require unique capabilities, most needs will be shared by more than one. And this is how we design our analytic platform. We are also actively looking for opportunities to enhance every aspect of our platform with AI and machine learning techniques in order to make our user experience more productive and streamlined. Today, there are augmented capabilities in every aspect of the product, from data preparation to visual exploration and proactive insights. To serve those needs, Oracle Entity Cloud created an architecture that consists of four layers. Everything in analytics starts with data. When it comes to data sources and connectivity, our goal is to be able to either connect to or bring any type of data that our users need. Analytic really needs to be the Switzerland of information, regardless of the type or location of data. On top of the data sources, we have the analytic catalog. This is really the heart of the platform. Within the analytic catalog, you can find semantic models created by IT side-by-side side to self-service datasets. Everything from massive warehouses down to an Excel file is indexed and discoverable. This is already a significant departure from traditional self-service thinking. While any analyst can be allowed to connect to data directly, import an Excel file or other formats, it is always registered and in some cases stored within the analytic catalog. Knowledge and data does not reside on people's desktop. It needs to have the ability to be shared and if needed, to be secure. At any point in time, you can come into OIC and ask a question, like, show me revenue by product type and city in the Americas. Or can the cloud will respond with the relevant data from various sources, such as semantic models IT created, Maybe you have access to the supply chain system. And by the way, three months ago, you uploaded an Excel file with relevant data. Maybe you should look at this one again. Everything is part of the platform. Everything is indexed. Everything is discoverable. 
The Oracle Analytics Catalog also hosts information about machine learning assets, and in some cases, the actual machine learning models. More on that later on our session. On top of the catalog, we have our data preparation capabilities with tool for data blending, wrangling, and any other type or term of for transformation. Analysts can use data flows for pre-processing of data sets or clean and correct the data interactively using our machine learning powered experience. Lastly, it all ends with the various experiences, which is the visual phase of analytics. This is what most people think of when they hear about analytics. Over here, we have a host of various capabilities, many because different people would want to consume analytics in different ways. Some will access a dashboard. For others, analytics is a PDF report that they receive every day at 8 a.m. Some will do self-service. Others will only use a chatbot on their phone or will never go to analytics as a destination, but will experience it as embedded content within their operational application. The key thing is that however you choose to consume it, everyone is sitting on the same platform. Everyone can collaborate and knowledge can flow within the organization without the boundaries of tools and technologies. Let's dive deeper into each one of the layers and capabilities. Since this is a roadmap session, as we go along, we will try to differentiate existing capabilities versus roadmap items. So please keep in mind that while all demos are done with live instances of the product, not every feature is currently shipped. When it comes to open connectivity, Oracle Anti Cloud provides connectors to dozens of different sources. Sources can be relational databases, big data, NoSQL, SaaS applications, and generic formats like Excel and CSV. Most of these sources are available for direct access via semantic models. They can be on Oracle Cloud, on your own data center, or a third-party cloud. Access to remote sources is done by using methods that are designed to be performant, scalable, and secure. All sources can be blended together to even create a single visualization from live data coming from relational sources, SaaS application, and an Excel file. Joining these sources together can be done ad hoc while exploring the data or with our powerful data modeling capabilities. I'm happy to announce two new significant capabilities that are coming to OSC. The first one are multi-table federated datasets. Our dataset editor provides our self-service users the ability to define a table, file, or query for analysis while blending was done at the analytics project level. Our new editor will retain those capabilities, but will also allow the creation of data models across multiple sources with predefined joins that can be reused and shared with other users. For BI developers, we are announcing our enterprise-scale semantic modeler that can be used to develop and deploy full-featured and large-scale semantic models. The semantic modeler will provide the breadth and depth of capabilities that we accumulated over the years for centralized and governed analytics. For those of you that have been actively building semantic models in Oracle Entity Cloud and Oracle Business Intelligence, this is the next generation of the all-powerful BI admin. In building it, we focused on addressing key learning from years of BI development and listening to our customers, making sure it is designed from the ground up to support large team development and source control. Our vision does not stop there. As I said in the beginning, we believe in a single analytic platform where knowledge can evolve from the analyst workbench into the enterprise system. Within an organization, analysts in different line of businesses will create many data sets to support their department, managers, and colleagues need. They might do it because they just subscribe to a new application, have access to a new data source, or a variety of other reasons. The key element is that they can do it faster and be more agile compared to a full-scale IT project. However, as the organization learns to rely on these new insights 
and the needs and demands grow, it might make sense to open and evolve the data sets into an enterprise asset. So instead of IT redefining and re-implementing the same knowledge that was accumulated in the analyst data sets over a long period of time, there should be a way to evolve the data sets. Through a process of version control and certification, our plan is to allow these data sets to be published into an existing semantic model or become the seed for a new one. Versioning and certification are important in this scenario, as there is a need to make sure that content that is merged into the enterprise-wide system is certified and approved by IT. Versioning will allow the analyst to continue to work on new versions of his personal data set while there is already a certified and published version out there. And one last thing, actually two last things. Being a true platform means that we should be open for you to consume the data in every way you will choose to. This is why we are announcing open JDBC access to Oracle NT Cloud. This would mean that the data sets and semantic models that you will create can be accessed not only by every Oracle NT Cloud experience, but also from your homegrown applications or other tools that need access to analytic data to help you ensure that everybody are talking in the same language and seeing the same numbers. In addition, we are announcing the Oracle Analytics Semantic Model Markup Language. Our semantics will be defined and stored using human-readable JSON format to allow our customers to edit them outside of our tool using alternative editors or even modify them via code in various languages like Python. This capability will not only provide much needed flexibility, but also a great opportunity to partners and implementers to automate and simplify deployments. Let's see some of these capabilities in action. Keep in mind that some of the capabilities that we will present are not yet available. However, all the demos are done using live instances of all Kinetic Cloud within our development environments. As we were all hopefully safe at home from the last couple of months, we wanted to feel a bit normal again. So our storyline will revolve around air travel, flight delays, and far away destination. Since I'm new to Oracle Analytic Cloud, the first thing I need is to get to my data. My airline performance data resides in the Oracle Autonomous Data Warehouse. So I'll start by creating a connection. Many of you have done this in the past connecting to a variety of sources. And as you can see, our list of connectors is growing with every release. Over here, you can see the upcoming direct connector into EPM Cloud, which allows self-service users to connect to EPBCS and FCCS without any help from IT. We are also working on connectors for remote JDBC sources and Google BigQuery. Going back to my autonomous data warehouse where I have my airline performance data, I will enter the connection details, drop in the wallet file, enter my credential, and my connection is ready to go. Back at the home page, I can either use the create button again to start my data set, or find the connection that I need and just double click on it. I landed in the newly designed dataset editor. Here I can navigate or search my schema to find the tables that I need and either double click or drag them over. Oracle IT Cloud will automatically identify the joins, which of course I can modify if needed. Note that I can add tables from other connections as well. And tables from various types of sources can be joined in the same dataset the analyst does not need to be concerned about technology barriers or moving the data around when it comes to bringing together data from multiple sources. In addition, for each individual table, I will be able to state if the data will be exported into the OSC in memory cache or queries will be processed live against the underlying source. Using the tabs below, 
The dataset editor allows me to go into each individual tables and interactively make corrections or additions that might be required. From basic operations like lowercase, uppercase, to more impactful transformation like grouping, binning, search and replace using regular expression, and even creating additional metrics and KPIs. Our machine learning based data profilers also generate recommendation for each column. Recommendation can be basic transformations, recommended treatment for sensitive data, or enrichment out of our knowledge base. As you can see here, for the destination state column, the profiler identified the column as a state name. Based on that, it recommended more information from the knowledge base, such as country, population, location details, and more. In this case, I'm interested in elevation and population. So all I need to do is to click on each one and they are added into my dataset. These enrichments are coming from our built-in system knowledge. But in many cases, you would like to extend the recommendation capabilities with knowledge that will benefit your users. This is exactly what we have done here. In this case, my administrator added to the Orca Anti-Cloud knowledge base maintenance details for individual planes based on their tail number. Data elements such as date of last service, hour spent, and facility were introduced into the Orca Anti-Cloud knowledge base to be offered to the analyst once the profiler identifies that the original column represents the tail number. As an analyst, I can quickly get to the correct data that I need without looking for any other tables or files to join with or to supplement my analysis. Your use case for enrichment might be different from product specification, account information, business unit details, and anything else that you might want to expose. But this is far more than just simplifying the lives of the analysts. This is a key example of how we can use augmented analytics to empower self-service users while adding a much needed level of governance on it. By providing a superior experience that eliminates the need of each individual analyst from finding its own source to join with, the administrator also directed all of them to the source that he or she wants them to use. And by doing so, increase the quality of analysis for each one of the analysts and reduce the risk of insights misalignment. Governance does not mean roadblocks. Machine learning allows us to do it smarter and benefits all sides of the equations. Before I finalize working on my dataset, I do want to share with you one more way that we are planning to enhance your experience and boost your productivity. We are working on introducing data quality insights based on our deep profile process. As you can see here, the insights will provide you with details on data distribution and frequency for every column. They also score the quality of the column and can identify issues. In my origin table, the state column seems to have an issue. It shows that the quality of the data is at 94%. Looking at the insight, I can identify that someone misspelled California on some of the values. I can click on the value to see the impacted rows, and I can also correct the error in the insight itself. Once I've corrected it, the profiler will rescan the column, and in this case, will give my data a clean bill of health. I will finish up by simply naming and saving my dataset. Hey, Gabby, this looks really great. And I believe you said before that these datasets are shareable with other users. But what if I'm an IT professional that wants to create a large scale semantic model? Thank you, Jack, for this very detailed and completely unplanned and unexpected question. Let me show you our new semantic modeler that I mentioned earlier. The new modeler is web-based and will eventually carry all the features and capabilities of the BI Admin. 
I can open existing semantic models, create new ones, or start one from an existing data set. As you can see, while the user interface is consistent with other areas of Oracle Cloud and the data set experience, the semantic modeler includes a lot more capabilities and depth that developers need in order to deliver enterprise-scale semantic models. As I stated before, we injected years of customers and internal experience in development of semantic models into the new tool, making sure to address key feedback topics. As an example, you can see the Git capabilities integrated directly in the tool. If you recall, the semantic model is defined using our semantic model markup language. This means that you can go into the Git repository and see and understand the actual files. Another valuable addition is the data lineage capabilities, allowing me to see the lineage of every logical or physical element across all layers. We have a question about the modeler. The question is, I'm an OBIEE developer moving into OAC. When will the new semantic modeler become available and will it work with all my existing RPDs? Yes, it is our intent that every semantic model that was developed with recent releases of BI Admin will be compatible with the new modeler without the need for any migration or effort from the analytics developer. As you know, Gabby, our customers are already using data flows when they need to do transformations that are too complex for Excel. In fact, analysts are now using data flows over Excel when they need to join, aggregate, transform, and create new metrics. In addition, data flows are also a great visual way to maintain and share these transformations especially if they need to track how specific results were derived. Now, data flows can already create and consume machine learning models stored in OAC. But I hear you have some exciting announcements in this area as well. As you stated, Oracle Analytics already allow users to train and consume machine learning models as part of their data flows. These models were stored within the analytics environments. However, we believe that just like data, machine learning assets might exist in different places, within model management platforms, applications, or even a service that you can subscribe to. For that, we are working on the ability to consume external models directly from the OEC interface to make sure these capabilities are code-free and accessible to business analysts. In this scenario, I would like to predict the likelihood of a flight to get delayed based on three definitions. Either not delayed or below zero minutes, delayed by up to 30 minutes or over 30 minutes. My data scientist created and published a regression-based machine learning model for me that I can use for my analysis. The first step is to get the model that resides on an external machine learning platform. What I can do is basically register the model into OEC. I choose the registration option, the platform the model resides in, in this case, Oracle Autonomous Data Warehouse, and find the model within the list of models that were made available for me. I can look at the model properties, input, outputs, and other related details before I choose the right one, and eventually give it a nicer name, and I'm done. The model did not move into OSC, but will now be usable within the user interface in a similar way to models created inside OSC. Let's go ahead and use it to score our scheduled flight dataset. Since I want to process my entire dataset, I'm going to use a data flow. We will start the flow by selecting the appropriate dataset. In this case, it's called scheduled traffic. Data flows have many types of transformations that can be used. The one I need right now is the apply model tool. Here we are presented with a list of models which are either residing or registered in Oracle Analytic Cloud. 
I'll pick the model that I registered a minute ago. Within the step editor, I can see and select the model output columns which will be added to my data set, as well as map the inputs. When possible, OEC will try to map the data set columns as the model inputs for you. But you can always do it yourself by clicking on the individual items. In addition to custom models, OSC data flows also provide you with access to advanced analytic functions available from the database. Functions like smart sampling, clustering, anomaly detection, and soon text tokenizations and graph analysis directly from the user interface. The most important part is that flows that use Oracle machine learning and Oracle advanced analytic functions will be function shipped and executed at scale on the Oracle database and not on the sometimes much smaller analytics instance resources. For now, all I want to do is to use my model to score the data. So let's finish this data flow by saving the score data into a table. Once I'll enter the data set and table details, I'll save the data flow and run it. While I will run it interactively without using our scheduler or batch execution capabilities, the actual processing is being done at the database level. Looks like the scoring process is done. So let's have a look at what we got. Back at the home page, we can easily find the data set that was created in order to start exploring and visualizing the data. The first column I'll grab is the actual prediction column with the three values for early or no delay, represented by zero minutes or less, delay of up to 30 minutes and over 30 minutes. To that, I will add flights. I'll choose to see the data as a stacked bar chart with the prediction as the color of the bar parts. Since many delays are caused by technical issues, Let's see if the aircraft manufacturing year can tell us something. As you can see, while it sometimes doesn't feel like that when you are the one being delayed, most flights are actually leaving either early or on time. So let's remove all the on-time flights and see what we can find. I also want to represent the data in two different ways, both actual and relative values. So I'll duplicate the visual. On the first one, I'll add a trend line, and the other one, I'll convert to a 100% stack bar. What I can start seeing is that newer planes are predicted to have less delays, but when they do have a delay, those are expected to be longer. Given that I'm looking at the prediction, maybe there is preemptive maintenance that I can do to avoid that. This is definitely require much more analysis by introducing other factors like route detail, weather, time of years, and other factors. However, the key point is that OEC make it easy to use machine learning models for predictive analytics and visually explore the results. That's powerful. But in many cases, people might be skeptical of statistical predictions. What if I want to know why something is green versus yellow? Glad you asked. As part of the scoring process, Oracle also creates the data to allow you to do the detailed analysis of the results. Let me add the model details that was created for this specific prediction. These columns allows me to deconstruct the decisions made by the algorithm in order to be able to better understand and explain the prediction. The columns will be different based on the algorithm that was used. In this case, the data scientist used a decision tree algorithm to train the model. I can see how many nodes or conceptually rows fell into each one of the buckets. I can go ahead and add additional elements of the tree to see every decision at every junction as the tree was processed. This is very useful information, but I'm not going to start navigating up and down the tree using a pivot table. Let's quickly create a tree diagram 
to visualize it for us. Now I can simply click either on the diagram or the pivot to see the respective areas. I can also use the diagram for navigation and the pivot for additional details. I'll highlight the outcome that I want to understand, and now I can use the diagram to navigate up the tree to see the decision progression of the algorithm. So Jacques, I hope it answered your question. Since I already found myself visually analyzing data, it is probably a good place to hand it over to you to show off some of the new enhancement around visualization and other experiences. Thanks, Gabby. So over the last few minutes, Gabby walked you through some great capabilities of OAC. But admittedly, the focus has really been all about the data so far. He's taken some raw data, he's modeled it, he's enriched it using some ML and custom knowledge suggestions, and he's even scored some of the data using advanced machine learning capabilities that we get when we connect to an Oracle database. So that's all great, but data alone doesn't solve this problem. At the end of the day, if we want to affect change, we can only do that by effectively communicating with your employees or your customers or both. So what's the best way to communicate your insights? Well, that's an easy question. The best way is all the ways, or every way. Different people internalize data different ways. Some people want to interact with a dashboard. Others just want to get a PDF in their inbox every morning. Some folks want to explore the data and try to find insights for themselves. And some folks don't even want to log into a computer. They just want to get the information pushed to their phones when it's most relevant. Well, the good news is that OAC supports numerous channels and experiences to deliver the information. So let's shift gears a bit and let me show you some of the new capabilities that are on the way. I'll start by opening up an airport analysis that I built on top of the data that Gabby prepared. So here we're looking at an overview of flights for the last five years from the major US carriers. Behind the scenes, this is hitting a real ADW instance with nearly 28 million flights with over 5,100 routes across 332 airports. Now these performance tiles give you a great at a glance view of where you currently stand. But in addition to this, you can now add spark charts to look at your trend in flights, trends across your routes, or even the distribution of airports across your regions. Now, as an analyst, I'd also like to see what my passenger growth is from year to year. Now, the best vis to see that is a waterfall chart, which clearly lets you see the growth from year to year. So for example, between 2015 and 2016, we can see that we added more than 26 million new passengers. Well, now you can turn your waterfall into a bridge report, which lets you easily see the contribution that each region had to your growth for each year. So now this dashboard has all the top level information anyone might want, but admittedly, it's a little cramped given my screen size. Well, fortunately, we continue to improve our Canvas layout algorithms and now, when needed, you can even stretch your canvas beyond the fold to give all your information the space it deserves. Next, let's go take a look at some interactivity improvements on my delay analysis canvas. First thing I want to do while I'm here is have OAC help me predict the next three quarters of delays. So I'll quickly do that by adding a forecast on this delay trend chart. Next. I'd love to have OAC also do a cluster analysis on this diagram that's looking at the average number of passengers and how long those passengers were delayed for. Again, with just one click, OAC can take care of that for me. Now this diagram is great, but it's currently looking at all flights for all airlines. And what if I wanted to compare how, let's say, Delta looks compared to American? Well, I could easily do that today by coming up here and toggling the prompt to first look at American. 
and then delta. That works for sure. But what if I wanted to compare any airline side by side? Well, now that couldn't be any easier. The only thing you would need to do is quickly make a copy of this chart right here and then add our new canvas filter control above each chart. You create these controls the exact same way that you create any other viz. But there's one key difference. Once you add them to your canvas, you can then go to any other visualization on your canvas and decide which one will subscribe to which filter. That's it. Now I can have the left viz focus on American at the same time as the right one looks at Delta. Oh. And all this works in addition to the page level filter too. So here I could look at one specific manufacturer. So the combination of all these things really gives you tremendous flexibility. Next, let me click on these flights that were over 180 minutes to go get the flight level details. So in addition to page level and on canvas filters, we continue to improve our overall navigation options. So on this canvas, I've got three simple visualizations. I've got a map, I've got an image, and a good old table. Now my map and my table are connected together and allow me to see all the flights that originated from a particular state, or vice versa, I can click on specific flights and easily see all the origins. Now the image above is an interesting new addition. If you look carefully, you can see that it's actually a form of a heat map. And the color of the planes represent how many flights that particular model plane had. So you can see that over 60,000 flights in our data set were on a Boeing 737, and ironically, much fewer for the larger ones. I really like the image, Jack. How hard is it to create one? Thanks, Gabby. As luck would have it, I happen to have a vignette available to look at right now. In a nutshell, you've got four simple things to do. First, you go to the mapping environment and simply upload a background image. Next, you create a map layer like any other map layer. And then third, you start drawing and drawing and drawing. And when you're finished, you just save it off and you've got your new digitized image. So as I was saying before the interruption, the planes on this image act exactly like any element on any other viz. So I can click on them and it will act as a filter here for the rest of my canvas. So now we see that the table on the right lists all the 737 flights and how many passengers were on them. The final navigation option I wanted to show is via data action on this table. If I right click on any of the flights, the data action will pass along all the relevant information required for me to get to the flight manifest in question. Okay, so now let's go back to our canvas and talk a little bit about augmented analytics and machine learning. Up until now, I've been lucky because I've been using a dashboard that someone else prepared for me. But what if I were starting from scratch? This is where the explain feature comes in. Suppose you didn't know where to start, but you knew that you wanted to do something about arrival delays. Well, all you need to do is right click on delays and invoke the ask explain feature. Behind the scenes, OAC is firing various machine learning algorithms to analyze the data. So here on the first screen, we're getting basic facts about delays, and you can already see that 13% of my flights are delayed by over 30 minutes. And below, you can see the breakdown across various dimensions like distance, length, you can see some weather information like visibility at the origin or wind at the destination. Now, a few of these are really interesting to me, so I'm going to go ahead and check them off for later. 
you can see that OAC identified some key drivers to my delays. It's showing that taxi time, origin, the type of engine, and even the specific aircraft are all key drivers to my delay. I can even get more granular and ask OAC to analyze a specific bin like flights over 30 minutes. Beyond key drivers, OAC actually looks for hidden groups in the data that might help you predict delays in the future. And finally, OAC also performs anomaly detection to identify individuals where the actual data was different than the expectation. To finish up, all I need to do is hit the Add Selected button, and OAC will create a brand new canvas for me to start deeper exploration. For my last demonstration, let me show you how we can use machine learning models to do predictions directly from the canvas. Let me start with a fresh canvas and create a simple chart that looks at my scheduled flights over time. Now we can see the delays in the past, but of course we don't have delays for the future flights yet. So what I'd like to do is leverage some machine learning models to help me predict which flights will have delays in the future. To do that, I simply need to create a scenario, pick from one of my registered machine learning models, and I'll pick this elastic network predictor, and create a scenario. Now behind the scenes, it used that model to create an on-the-fly prediction data set that it joined along my original data. So now I can see the predicted delays in the future, and we can even look at predictions across all my other attributes, like the destination region. So I've covered a lot of capabilities and visualizations today. And although I personally think our UIs and experiences are great, we do realize that some people and companies have very specific needs when it comes to look and feel. That's why we continue to invest in our data visualization SDK that lets you easily integrate our capabilities directly into your web applications. Up until now, I've been showing you everything from a desktop user's perspective and their browser, but it's not lost on us that over 50% of internet traffic is attributed to mobile devices. In fact, a Pew survey recently reported that over 60% of enterprise users say that their first point of contact in terms of business is via email on their mobile devices. Last but not least, the same survey said that most users actually prefer consuming information and news via the experiences on their mobile device. So with that in mind, let's take a look at what we're doing for mobile users. First and foremost, DV content is completely adaptive and responsive. So what does that mean? Well, that means that without doing anything at all, you can simply go to your mobile browser on your phone or tablet and just open up your project and it will, and it will adapt so that you can see and interact with all the great visualizations you created on your browser on the desktop. In fact, you can even create new visualizations directly from your phone. In addition to mobile web, we continue to invest and add capabilities to day by day, our personal data assistant. In fact, we just added the ability for day by day to alert you when your data reaches certain meaningful thresholds, like you've met your quota, or maybe you're underperforming in a certain region. And we'll be introducing brand new visualizations, such as tag clouds, heat maps, and an awesome new map visualization later this year that I'm pretty sure will blow you away. But today, I'm excited to announce the reimagining of the Oracle BI mobile application. We'll be introducing a new Oracle Analytics mobile app that will be laser focused on providing a world-class experience for users who want to search, interact, 
and collaborate with all their great curated content in their Oracle Analytics cloud environment. In fact, let me show you an early preview of the new Oracle Analytics mobile app. Once the app is open, OAC users should feel right at home with our unified homepage. With a click or a swipe, you can easily find your favorites, view your data visualization projects. You can even upload a data set directly from your mobile device. The app is integrated with all your other mobile apps like email, and if you receive a spreadsheet or some other attachment, you can upload it to OAC with just a tap and then start analyzing. Finally, you can also find all your classic content, such as answers reports, your dashboards, and even your BI publisher reports too. In fact, while I'm here, let me open this analysis. Without ever leaving the app, you can view and interact with your classic content as you're accustomed to. You can scroll on this table. I can tap on any chart element to get more detail or drill, and of course, you can interact with your prompts. Where the app really shines, though, is interactivity with data visualization projects. DV projects will be rendered 100% natively on the mobile device, where you'll benefit from the same fast and fluid visualizations that you're accustomed to in day by day. In fact, we'll be extending our native charting library substantially across both apps to support the most popular visualizations in OAC. By default, when exploring a project, we'll optimize it for viewing on the phone. That means we'll adjust the interactive model to quickly allow you to go from viz to viz with just one finger, and of course, we'll support all the expected interactions from the desktop. Now, once in a while, someone who created a report on the desktop might want to view it exactly how he or she created it. For that, we'll have a new desktop layout option that will re-render the project exactly as the author created it. The last thing I wanted to highlight was that Oracle Analytics Mobile and Day by Day will be the first to uptake a new Oracle Analytics collaboration service that will allow you to share and comment across day by day and Oracle Analytics Mobile and eventually your desktop as well. Now we're still working on all of this, but we look forward to releasing this app and many more updates in the not too distant future. Now, one last thing before I leave, even though our initial goal with the new app is to have a first-class consumption experience, that doesn't mean the folks in the labs aren't cooking up some crazy ideas for the future. In fact, we've invited Matt Malella from development to tease you all with some of those cool concepts. Thanks, Jacques. Uh, here in the lab, and the team has been working hard on some new concepts for analytic creation, um, being able to take data and create projects. Um, it's pretty difficult to do on a mobile device, and so they've come up with some unique concepts. Now, these things may or may not see the light of day. We're experimenting and exploring different ideas, but we want to show them off because we think they're pretty cool and they may end up in the pot. So I'm going to go ahead and choose one of my data sets, uh, the summary flight data. And right away, you'll see some bubbles. Um, these bubbles represent our columns. Uh, the creative team um, felt that, you know, it might be a really great way to have a visual representation of the data. Um, and I can pick and choose things that might be important to me, like the number of passengers, just by tapping them. And you can see the bubbles have physics and they move around, which makes it kind of fun and a bit of a delightful experiment experience. Um, I'm going to choose arrive with the label and a few more. And if I want, I can kind of filter. I'll filter on just dimensions. I need to really narrow my uh, set of bubbles because I have too many to pick from. Choose carrier um, and maybe destination region. And I'll switch back to measures. And I'll add a few more wet measures, number of flights, distance, a um, few others. However many I want, uh, whatever works for my analytic needs. Um, if you wanted to, you can tap the little button up in the top corner there 
And you can see that I can just get the standard way of uh, uh, selecting. My, my, the team likes to say it's kind of like the uh, old guy way referring to me. So they're, they're you know, making it easy for folks who are used to traditional methods for selecting these things. Uh, but let's go back to the bubbles because it's a lot more fun. I'll go ahead and hit the check. And what it's going to do is going to create a bunch of visuals for me. So similar to the, uh, the data experiences we have in other areas, it, it goes ahead and automatically creates visualizations based on the selections I've made. And it's going to show some dense ones on the, on the top. And then you can see there's a bunch of um, cards here uh, laid out. And again, borrowing from other apps, we have a bunch of young developers. Um, and I can you know, swipe right to keep that one, swipe right to keep this one, swipe left to remove that one. So it's a really easy experience, swipe right again, swipe right again, and I guess I like a lot of these, so I keep swiping right. Um, and if I want, I can, again, toggle and show a more traditional way of doing this. So I can you know, just decide that I can turn this off, turn it back on, select another one that makes sense. I have actually five visualizations built and selected already for me on a mobile phone. So I'll hit this checkbox when I'm all done. I go ahead and save that. It'll upload the project. I can analyze or use that uh, later on. I'm going to cancel this just for the sake of time. Um, I'm going to go back here, go back one more time. Another concept that we're exploring, uh, really continuing our exploration on and really productizing is our idea that you can get data from really anywhere, uh, pictures, documents, things like that. So I'm gonna upload a new data set and uh, I, I can choose either my camera and point my camera at a document, uh, but I've actually previously taken a picture of this, so I'll choose documents and I'll choose this picture of a document that I took. And right away you saw that the engine went ahead and figured out where the table in this document is and then selected the values and shows you quickly how it's going to be kind of laid out. I'll just hit done here. And now as a user, again, I can really quickly decide, oh, you know, it didn't quite figure out cost, right? So I'm making a number, I'm going to make um, sales price a number. Segment and product are both dimensions, so I'll leave those alone. And I'm going to go ahead and save that. So I'm going to save this as a new data set. And I can do, you know, additional exploration with that if I wanted to. So I'll refresh my screen here. There's my data set. I can tap on that, and now you can see the same bubbles that we were just working on. So those are some of the cool things that we're working on in the labs, and I hope you enjoy them, and maybe they'll make the product. Before we will finish our presentation, I just want to highlight some useful destinations where you can experience more of our capabilities and become an active member of our community. You are welcome to visit our Oracle Analytics free public servers under Oracle Analytics Live. These instances showcase various dashboards created by the community. Our online library is full with useful resources like tutorials, plugins, workshops, map players, and more. We also have a YouTube channel to which we are publishing a lot of content, including specific videos on every new features that we introduce. And lastly, we would like to welcome you to join our ID Lab, where our partners and customers can suggest product ideas and vote on ideas posted by others. Myself and my team regularly read all the suggestions and take the ideas that got support from the community in our roadmap consideration. We are only a few months into the ID Lab, and I'm happy to report that more than 25% of the ideas you submitted are either delivered, worked on, or planned. Thank you all for joining us today. My team and I hope the session was useful for you. Thank you, Gabby, Jacques, and Matt for a very informative uh, session. Uh, we are now at uh, the top of the hour. So uh, we've run out of time. Um, many of the answers, uh, many of your questions have been answered uh, online. Uh, but feel free to reach out to me if you've still got questions at duncan.fitteroracle.com. We very much look forward to welcoming you to future Oracle Analytics Online sessions, which you can find at www.oracle.com slash OA Summit. Uh, so please check out those. 
Uh, thank you for joining us and stay safe. Thank you.